Hello and welcome back to the Beautiful Things channel. I'm back today with another What I've Been Sewing video and this time it is all clothes. Now I have been super busy sewing lots and lots of bits and bobs. I will link a video that I put up a couple of days ago about our Sew Beautiful Things sewing club which shows you all the bags and packing cubes and things like that that I've been busy sewing. So if you haven't yet seen that you might want to check it out. But let me show you what I'm wearing. This, first of all, was made with scraps. And I've got it on as my first garment because I've been pottering around the house in it. But it would have probably been more logical to have shown you the thing that I've made with the actual fabric first. But we're going to do it in reverse. So this was leftovers from a kilo wrap dress, which I'm going to show you in a moment. I have made another one of my roughly sleeved vest tops with it. Now this really thin lightweight jersey, it's like t really t-shirt jersey, is absolutely perfect for these tops because you get the really nice flouncy sleeve. It is a Tilly and the Buttons Agnes, which I have hacked into a vest using the Like So Amazing tutorial. So that kind of lowers the arm side just a little bit and I've done a really low scoopy neckline on this one. And then I've added the ruffle sleeves using my own tutorial. And again, I will link that here. It's a two part tutorial. And I'd love to see some of the t-shirts that you guys have made. Now I didn't have enough fabric to bind this. I bind it under the arm and also around the neckline. And I didn't have enough of this fabric left to do that. So I grabbed some scuba from my stash. And it's actually worked really, really well because it's nice and firm. So where this is quite a floaty jersey, yes, it clings to my body, but it probably wouldn't hold its positioning quite so nicely on the neckline. And also what sometimes happens when you've got a very thin jersey is it stretches and goes kind of see-through um, or a little bit whiter over the printed design. So using the black has worked really well for this. Now the fluty sleeves are done with a rolled hem on my overlocker and I've used, I'm going to come close so you can see, I've used pink overlocking thread on there and I've also done a rolled hem on the bottom. This is slightly shorter than I would like um, but as I say I was working with scraps so I went as long as I possibly could um, and then straightened it all up so I would probably make it a little bit longer um, but it's just about okay. Now I'm wearing this with my ginger jeans. These are absolutely lovely. I love them. I'm going to try and put the camera up a little bit higher so that you can see them. One sec. Saucepans for the win. Do -do -do. Wobble, wobble. That's a saucepan and a box. <laughs> no. Are still not going to help. I'm going to have to do the whole chop the head off thing, I'm afraid, and just talk at you while you look at my bottom. So it's still not perfect, but you're going to get the gist. I'm going to give you a twirl in a minute. Let me flush my belly for you. Well, a little bit of it. But these are my ginger jeans. As you can see, they fit really nicely. Charlotte Newbury is an absolute whiz when it comes to the fit. In fact, let me show you the inside. I'm going to do it without flashing my knickers. I've got big Bridget pants on so you're not going to see much. There we go. Look at that. Cacti inside. They're so much fun. And you can see I've got all my embroidery on the pockets, my top stitching, all the little belt loops and rivets. I'm really, really chuffed with these. I've done a whole video about making the ginger jeans. Um, I took a three day class at my own studio with Charlotte Newland from The Sewing Bee. We had an absolute hoot, it was so much fun. And it was really lovely being a pupil um, for three days rather than actually teaching a class. Um, it's a bit bizarre doing it in your own studio because you do find people are going, oh Claire, where's such and such? Or, oh Claire, how do I do so and so? And I had to keep stopping and saying, I don't know. Ask Charlotte. <laughs> so, but it was lots and lots of fun. I will link it here. It's part of our BTHQ banter series, which is a behind the scenes look at the studio. Um, but predominantly most of this episode is all about the three days with Charlotte and you get to see all of our finished jeans and the fit and all of the fun um, that we had during the class. 
We have got another one listed. Unfortunately, for you guys, it's already fully booked. I'm delighted about that, obviously, but I will be talking to Charlotte soon about getting another date on. I can highly recommend taking a class because although each of the steps for these jeans I could have done by myself just following the instructions, I think, um, I would never, ever have got the fit right because I would have just made them, I would have bumbled on through, I would have followed the instructions, and there is no way they would have fit around my bottom like they do, um, because of the adjustments that Charlotte made. I had to have a full butt adjustment. Um, it wasn't as painful as it sounds. Um, and also the waistband we had to change, because I've got quite a, an arc here. I've got a big bottom which sticks out, so I've got a big arc here, and we had to remove about three inches from the back here so that it sits really nicely, but you can see it does. And as I sit down, it stays there, it doesn't move, um, which is something that I never get with jeans that I've bought off the high street. So yes, as a dressmaker, I don't call myself a dressmaker, I'm not a dressmaker. As someone who makes their own clothes occasionally, um, I could have made them myself, I would never have got this fit. And so spending that money on the course was probably one of the best things I did. So I'm really pleased with it, can highly recommend it. Um, and the nice thing is, is that the changes that she's made to my pattern um, are now there permanently. So I can make another pair. In fact, I've got another pair cut out, ready to sew. And I know that they'll fit just as well. Uh, the only thing I will say, and I'm gonna be totally honest here, so sorry if it's too much information, but these are now, they're not too loose but they're not as tight as they were. I actually think that's a good thing, um, but something to bear in mind that I hadn't thought about at the time, last week was the time of the month for me, and so I was therefore a little bit puffier and swollen and a bit bigger than I probably actually am most of the time, and so the measurements that I took of my body for the jeans probably weren't as appropriate um, as they could have been had I done the class, say, this week. So just bear that in mind. Um, obviously, if you are gonna be doing um, a workshop and you're really prone to kind of bloating and swelling around that time of the month, if the workshop falls around then, it might be a good idea to take your measurements um, sort of the week before, um, on the actual week, and maybe even the week after to get kind of an average um, to work from rather than taking your measurements on the day if you're all puffy and bloated like I was. Just something to bear in mind. So I'm gonna go out in the garden now, I'm gonna give you a twirl of this top and these jeans, and then I will come back and I will show you my kilo wrap dress. Here we go. This is my kilo wrap dress. This fabric is the same fabric I used for the top, obviously. It's what I cut out first, and then the scraps that were left over from it enabled me to be able to make the frilly sleeve top. It's really lovely. It's from Hobby Lobby in the US. I paid, I think, about I think $5 a metre, possibly, something like that. I know it was on special, there was lots of money off, there was I think it's like 40% off all fabric the day that I was there. I'll link my shopping trip here so you can see when I purchased it. Um, but I absolutely love it. It's a really lightweight t-shirt jersey. I was slightly concerned because it's white that it would be see-through in the sun. But my school mum friends assure me it's not. I wore it on the school one last week in brilliant sunshine. And you could just see the outline of my knickers, but that was just because I had a bit of VPL and nothing to do with the sun. So I'm really pleased with it, it's super comfy. As always, the Kilo Wrap dress is so flattering. It's one of those garments that if you haven't made one already, you might see them and think, oh, I don't know if it's for me. Um, and I was exactly the same when I first saw it online. Everyone seemed to be making it, and I was like, oh, I don't know, I think I'd look like a sack of potatoes in that. But when I actually saw one in the flesh, I changed my mind, and I've now subsequently made four of them. Um, one of them I've given away because it was actually too big and I didn't really like the fabric that much, but I'll link my Kilo Wrap Dress video here if you haven't seen it, um, and that's where I show you the other ones that I've made. But if you are umming and ahhing about this pattern, trust me, it's incredibly flattering. I have known people make it in cottons as well, but it is designed for jersey. The only change that I make to a kilo is that I put bands 
on the arm and the neckline because I don't like just turned under jersey hems. I think they look messy and quite often, especially if you use a lightweight jersey, they roll to the front and I think they just look really, really handmade. Um, so I make my own bands. All I do, um, in fact, the instructions are in my tutorial for the vest top, but I'll talk you through it briefly here. I just measure the whole way around the neck band and I reduce it to 90% and then I make a band. I don't include or allow any seam allowance, I just use 90% measurement, join it together right on the raw edges and attach it and I do the same with the armholes and that seems to work really well. Again, I've used the scuba like I did on the top because the jersey I think is too lightweight for the bands and I think it gives a really good look. I think because the stripes are black, it's nice to have the black um, bands it just adds a little bit extra to it and can we just say look at this pattern matching so yes the flowers don't match I'm not that good but the stripes go all the way round and I am very very pleased to say that that is purely fluke <laughs> I didn't try um, it is purely fluke when I was pinning up the side seams I did have a little bit of a finagle just to kind of make sure that they tried to stay in line but when I cut it out it's just the way that it works. So it's obviously a really nice quality jersey that it laid right on the table as I cut it out. I'm gonna move you. I've put heels on for my messy kitchen. I've put heels on and now I'm too high, so I'm like this, trying to chop my head off. I really should be a bit more prepared, shouldn't I, to make these videos, but it is Bank Holiday Monday. We go on holiday tomorrow. Um, so I finished work on Saturday, brought everything home with me, didn't bring the tripod home with me um, and I haven't even got my little Joby tripod so you're having to make do with boxes but I wanted to get this filmed because I want to take a lot of these clothes away with me, um, I want to wear them while we're away and take some photographs of them and I thought this would be a good video to edit and put together so that it would go up and live on my channel while I'm away. So you're seeing this on Thursday I believe um, and we will be what will we be doing? We will be on our last day in Denmark at Legoland and traveling back home probably tonight. Um, and we're not coming home home, we're going to Birmingham to the National Board Games Exhibition, which I've been to every year um, for the last two years. I've taken my son with me and I've always made a point of visiting the rag market while I'm in Birmingham. And I will be doing that again. It will be, when are you seeing this? Thursday, it will be tomorrow. I'm gonna be going there. So again, I will do a vlog. I'm hoping to get some more fabric to make some more of these kilo dresses. Um, two of the fabrics that I bought to make the last two were from the rag market. They have lots of this kind of lightweight t-shirty jersey and it's normally about £1.50, £2 a metre. Um, and as you need a good three metres to be able to make a kilo dress to get the length right um, and also because they are really wide. Um, I'm not going to do it here but if you watch the kilo video I'll show, I'll show you how it all opens up and how it all does up um, and you'll be able to see why there's so much fabric needed. So yeah I'm looking forward to that and then hopefully I will get some more sewing done throughout June and we'll be able to come back to you with another makes video. I've got lots and lots of things up my sleeve. Um, it's been really nice this year so far I've actually managed to get quite a few bits made and you're getting these videos about every six weeks, which considering how much else I do and how much else I'm doing, um, I don't think that's bad. So thank you very much for watching. If you don't already subscribe, please do. I am really, really close to 5,000 subscribers and I do have a really fantastic giveaway to launch once I hit 5,000. Um, I have been given some lovely fabric by the girl, wonderful people at Girl Charlie to give away to you. Um, and I'm not being paid to promote them. They're just giving me some fabric. I asked, they gave. I'm totally honest there. Um, they said, yes, no problem, Claire. We will give you some fabric. So once I hit 5,000 subscribers, I will be doing a fabric giveaway. So if you don't already subscribe to the channel, please do. I'm gonna say smash that like button. I hate that, but give me a thumbs up, please. And please, please, please comment below. Let me know what you think of my outfits and let me know what you'd like me to make next. I will see you again soon. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.